an important part of Grover's Corners. It's on a hilltop. A windy hilltop. Lots of sky, lots of clouds, often lots of sun and moon and sky. Yes, beautiful spot up here. Mountain Laurel and lilacs. I often wonder why people like to be buried in Woodlawn and Brooklyn when they might pass the same time up here in New Hampshire. Over there are the old stones, 1670, 1680. Strong-minded people that come a long way to be independent. Summer people walk around there laughing at the funny words on the tombstones. <laughs> it don't do any harm. And genealogists come up from Boston, get paid by city people for looking up their ancestors. They want to make sure they're daughters of the American Revolution and of the Mayflower. <laughs> well... I guess that don't do any harm either. Wherever you come near the human race, there's layers and layers of nonsense. Over there are some Civil War veterans. Iron flags on their graves. New Hampshire boys had a notion that the Union ought to be kept together, though they never see more than 50 miles of it themselves. All they knew was the name, friends. The United States of America. The United States of America. And they went and died about it. This here is the new part of the cemetery. Here's your friend, Mrs. Gibbs. <laughs> Let me see. Here's Mr. Simpson, organist at the Congregational Church. And Mrs. Soames, who enjoyed the wedding so. You remember? Oh. And lots of others. And Editor Webb's boy, Wallace, whose appendix burst while he was on a Boy Scout trip to Crawford Notch. Yes, an awful lot of sorrow has sort of quieted down on him. People just wild with grief have brought their relatives up to this hill. We all know how it is. And then time. And sunny days. And rainy days and snow. We're all glad they're in a beautiful place and we're coming up here ourselves when outfits over. Now, there are some things we all know, but we don't take them out and look at them. We all know that something is eternal. And it ain't houses and it ain't names and it ain't earth. And it ain't even the stars. Everybody knows in their bones that something is eternal. And that something has to do with human beings. All the greatest people ever lived have been telling us that for 5,000 years. And yet you'd be surprised how people are always losing hold of it. There's something way down deep. That's eternal about every human being. You know as well as I do that the dead don't stay interested in us living people for very long. Gradually, gradually, they lose hold of the earth. And the ambitions they had, and the pleasures they had, and the things they suffered, and the people they loved, they get weaned away from Earth. That's the way I put it. 
weaned away. And they stay here while the earth part burns away, burns out. And all that time, they slowly get indifferent to what's going on in Grover's corners. They're waiting. They're waiting for something that they feel is coming. Something important and great. Aren't they waiting for the eternal part in them to come out clear? Through the manipulation of normalised mannerisms in gesture, voice and movement, I portrayed the stage manager as a wise but relaxed character who conveys a sense of authority through her insightful understanding of life experiences. She has an owlish gaze, symbolic of her wisdom and education, and accentuated by aspects of her costume and cultivated voice. The circle is a symbol for eternity and is reflected through my movements around the performance space and the lanterns each of which represents a character in the cemetery, including the painted discs on each lantern, which reflects the character's traits. The hanging lantern represents the moon, also a symbol for eternity, illuminating to reveal the eternal heart of the stage manager. Mr. Simpson's lantern remains black as a symbol of his suicide. As director, I focus on emphasis, highlighting Wilder's intended meaning of finding the eternal and appreciating every aspect of our daily lives. Rhythm and emphasis is manipulated through the pacing of important words and phrases, enabling the stage manager's poetic nature to, to dictate the flow of the play. The manipulation of time is further implied through the stage manager's connection to her pocket watch, her contemplative and patient movements, and the continuous clock tick of the soundtrack. The train whistle and the illumination of the lantern symbolise the theme of new beginnings and the continuous cycle of life. I have used an eclectic theatre style with aspects of meta-theatre and pantomime, displayed through use of naturalistic acting skills combined with subtle gestures and the innate application of props and set. In keeping with Wilder's aim, the set is devoid of glamour and wooden set pieces are used in keeping with the contextualised time period of the early 1900s. A map of my hometown is used to emphasise a personal connection to the monologue. But that was not seen today. <laughs>